So, malware crawler is a tool that detects, analyzes, and destroys malware targeting industrial control uh, SCADA system. And for the past 16 years, I spent the bulk of my time in the world of ICS SCADA. And the, the entire time was to defend it from cyber threats. And at the same time, the past decade I spent in the world of advanced persistent threat. I never knew these, these two worlds would collide till I found myself doing incident response in the weirdest, space, weirdest places on the planet, doing IR in the middle of an electrical substation or oil refinery. Now, the objective of APT that targets IT is pretty straightforward. It's pretty much smash and grab. You go there, you own a machine, drop the local admin hash, crack it, move lateral, and from there on, start collecting all the goodies. Diagrams, emails, meeting notes, the crown jewels. Now, in the OT side of the world, the operation technology side, like let's say for a power, power company, there's really no juicy IP that a nation state can acquire that'll give them some type of competitive advantage. Now, it makes sense for a nation state to target high-tech firms defense companies, think tanks, government agencies. But a power company really has nothing good to give you. Yet, this is the same industry that's being targeted by the same people that are actually owning the defense contractors worldwide. The ones that are targeting high-tech firms, global um, think tanks. So what are they doing in the world of places where there's nothing really to, uh, where you can have a strategic advantage uh, to replicate? Now, as the first uh, speaker was talking about, one of the challenges is that if you're in the ICS world, it's very complicated. You can't just simply go there and start causing havoc. But if you have the necessary data, you can definitely do as much damage as you want. And that is the exact data that's being exfiltrated from these organizations. And, the, and it's not just attack. One thing I'll talk about an example is also industrial espionage as well. So before I want to jump into this, let's kind of talk about the uh, world that we're dealing with. So pretty much the bulk of the people here and most of the tracks are geared for the IT. I'm glad that Kaspersky actually made an industrial track, which is the OT side. The operational technology side is where the magic happens. This is where the power is being generated, um, distributed, transmitted. This is where your favorite candy bar is being made. This is where we find RTUs, PLCs, DCSs, HMIs, and so on. The technology is much different from what we find in the traditional IT side of the house. So this is where we have pros and cons, but from a security standpoint, one of the issues we have is, think about it, for the past two decades, we've had cybersecurity companies develop all sorts of goodies and products for the IT world. Yet in the OT world, we're still struggling to find some of the most basic stuff to implement in our environment. Now, the attackers, the people who are generating these sophisticated malware know this. And this is why they take full advantage of this. So I call this the player slide. So the question is, you know, who's involved in this game of targeting industrial control system operators? We have the Americans, we have Chinese, Russian, Israeli, Iranians. These are some of the type, top cyber culprit in this game. We've seen the intrusion sets of Dooku, uh, Black Energy, Flame, Tapbox, and so on, in this, running in the IT and OT environment for a lot of these ICS operators. I mean, we've known for the past couple years of high profile, high profile attacks that have actually targeted you know, the ICS side of the house that caused damage. So it's not, it's not a conspiracy, it's not a mystery. We know this exists, and that's why there's a specific track set here at this conference for this. Now, this stuff has been used, these intrusion sets, from pure sabotage to espionage. And one of the things is that, you know, some of the things you see are, hey, we know this, we heard of it. But for people who operate in the IC, ICS side of the house, the OT side of the house, there's a couple intrusion sets or actors that many of you guys, have, I mean, most of the IT side have never seen, but within our community that we see. Like, for example, in the Middle East, we refer to as a group called the Singapore Crew. They operate specifically targeting ICS, operator, ICS operators in the Middle East. 
And the reason why we call them Singapore crew is that their metadata and their, and their weaponized document always shows up as ZHSG. There's multiple variants of Chinese you could get in the language code. There's Ch PRC Chinese, Taiwanese Chinese, and there's Singapore Chinese. So this shows up in all their data, from their, meta, from their metadata, even to their C2 infrastructure. It's always operated out of Singapore. And another culprit we find are universities. Um, again, I'm not picking on the Chinese. I'm just using them for example. But um, I'm not going to butcher the name. The uh, Hong Zhang University of Science and Technology, we just call them HUST. These guys are so nasty that you know, when they're exfilling stuff out, it's going straight to the IPs. They don't even care. So, and they also happen to operate the biggest energy lab in China. So there, there is a correlation between what they're siphoning and who is it going to. Now, the question is, we were talking about is what they, you know, what are they taking from there? And I'm going <clears> to <throat> go back saying that when you generate power, there's nothing proprietary about this. Power generation, whether it be in Germany, India, the U.S., it's the same concept. They're probably using the same Siemens, the same Westinghouse, whatever it may be. So there's nothing really proprietary about this information. The same thing would go for oil refinery. The way you refine crude oil into kerosene, gasoline, diesel, it's just pure science. Take X amount of sulfur, put sulfur, take this carbon out, at this temperature, you get this byproduct. So why are these entities being targeted for, um, for this information? There's nothing proprietary about this. The only exception for not uh, having great IP is just manufacturing. So within the industry, we're able to obtain the information that was actually being exfiltrated out, siphoned halfway across the world to these various threat actors. And what was discovered, you know, really was threat, you know, really concerned us. And we showed the industry, you know, they realized this is, you know, this is not the normal data that these guys would be taking. You know, they're not taking financial data. They're not taking mergers and acquisition data. What they're actually taking is data that correlate back into the inner workings of their ICS infrastructure. We're looking at Ars logic files being pulled out of oil refiners. You're pretty much giving the basic PLC. Um, blueprint how the refineries operate. We're seeing ASR, screen, ASR schemes coming out of uh, major utilities for the distribution network. We're seeing Modbus registers for uh, between upstream and downstream natural gas being siphoned out. I could spend all day going off a list of what they've exfiltrated outside these environments, but again, I'm only limited to um, my 15, 10 or 15 minutes I still have on stage. So most of the folks who deal with IT malware you guys are probably used to when you look in the code to see what they're trying to siphon off. You'll see, okay, this code is looking for .pdf, .xl, .xlx, .docx. So we kind of know what, the, you know, the, what they're looking for. On the, when we're looking at malware on the OT side, we look at something very interesting. They're looking at .acid files. They're looking at you know, um, Rockwell PLC logic files. They're looking at AutoCAD diagrams. They even go as far as XML with putting certain like registry, uh, regex uh, attributes to say, hey, I'm only concerned about XML that have DMV3 input and output data into it. Now, the question is what you can do with this data. We've heard the, you know, from the President of the United States and the media talking about, oh, they could shut down the power grid. You know, this is the this scary scenario, scenario that you can sell to the public. Well, you know, again, for someone who's been in this industry long enough, in the power utility, in the OT side, and a lot of you guys, it's very difficult to do. It's not just kidding a couple keystrokes and the power goes down. It's not, it's not that hard, that easy. Even if you send the greatest black hats, put them in a room in the OT environment, they'll be too busy scratching their head like, hey, what is this? What's going on? It's just the, uh, the sheer complexity to this. And one of the things, you know, um, it was interesting, you know, I'm, uh, I deal with larger in industrial uh, uh, projects, even hear about the laboratory, how that's set up, it's all designed around self-preservation. The logic's always there. I will not destroy myself. So even for a power grid, again, th uh, the grid is designed around to protect itself from, you know, hurricanes, icing, whatever it may be. So that logic is built in. So you can't just simply have somebody go in there like, okay, let's shut down a couple relays in a substation and we're going to shut down the grid. It doesn't work like that. 
There's a whole logic behind it. You try to attempt to do that, the EMS SCADA kicks in and goes, wait a minute, my jurors is to preserve the grid. It'll undo what the hacker did in a few seconds. But this is where it gets interesting. In order to really hit the grid or some type of major industrial operation, you need to have automation. And you need to know the inner workings. Automation is simple, that's a malware. But the inner working is the tough part. And this is the data that's been siphoned across for the past decade or now. How is the ASR scheme set up in this uh, plan? At what time does the QC control kick in for the refinery? What is the balanced scheme needed for quality control at this chemi for chemical analysis between natural gas? This is the data that you need to manipulate to weaponize this stuff. One of the things we also found out that is the bulk of victims that we talked to that whose ICS operations were actually being targeted, at one point in time, their IT infrastructure was owned. And guess what type of data they actually exfilled out of that? Now, I'll give you some examples. So, in the uh, Middle East, energy, ICS operators, is the bulk of the economy. This is the sheer reality. This is where the money comes in. And after Stuxnet was launched, you're dealing with a culture that's eye for an eye, and it became malware for malware. So a uh, natural gas provider uh, uh, company out in the Middle East was experiencing pressure issues in their pipelines. So they went in, the, you know, they're realizing this, you know, couple, you know, couple hundred miles down, like, hey, we're having, or 50 or 100 miles down, we're having issues, and they put an inquiry into this. And what they're, when they, they get back, like, hey, you know, the, um, the, the SCADA masters, everything looks legit there. So they send out field operators to go check out what's going on. And when they go there, they're, like, they're looking at the concept, they're looking at the, you know, the gauges, they're like, hey, everything looks legit. You know, if there's something wrong with your SCADA side, or there's something wrong with the data that's being sent out. One of the <clears throat> field crews who was vigilant enough, he went out there, he noticed in one of the control rooms, stuff was just misplaced. He was like, wait a minute, it looks like someone just broke into this room recently. <clears throat> Next thing you know, we launch an investigation. Uh, we get an image of the uh, actual uh, box itself, and we start looking at it. And voila, there's a new service that happens to appear in the registry. And we start analyzing, uh, pulling this malware apart. So this malware, the goal was to actually send bogus data to the EMS, uh, to, I'm sorry, to the SCADA master to make it look like everything's legit, at the same time telling the RTU to do some nasty stuff. Now, this is what I was talking about before, why you need that previous information. See, the attacker's smart. He knows that if I start messing around with the RTU immediately, what's going to happen? That SCADA system is going to pick, master's going to pick it up. I'm going to have field uh, crews out there. We're going to realize something's wrong. We'll go to manual. So how do, you, how do you bypass that? Simple. What they did was, there was, it's a flat network, there's a uh, Windows box con connected to the RTU, the RTU's plugged into the uh, various ICS devices. So the malware goes in there, it starts to go, okay, I will become the default RTU to the uh, SCADA master, I'm the new slave. It's sending bogus data. Everything's okay here, everything's okay. At the same time, the actual malware is going and telling the RTU, hey, I'm your new master now, do this, do that. So this is a common theme that we're seeing, is that when, you know, especially I don't, uh, when we have PLC RTUs involved in, you know, uh, there's always a machine plugged in the back. So this is where the, the lowest hanging fruit is, is those machines that are not very well protected. Now, after a while, they realized what was going on, but fortunately, nothing happened. But the goal for this was, it wasn't an explosion, it was actually dis disrupting, because pipelines are actually regulated by pressure. So the goal was to make it Heavy volume, low volume, heavy volume, low volume. And what that'll do is, you know, imagine just rattling a pipe or cage where you're just messing around with the integrity of it. Eventually, it's more costly to deal with massive, dis massive issues across your pipeline versus dealing with one explosion. So we got in, been talking about sabotage. Let's talk about another world that we see, uh, industrial espionage. Now, for most companies, the way they hold their strategic advantage in the, you know, in the market is if they hold, if they have the great trade secret, you know, this is my recipe for my, you know, my secret sauce or to my magic blue pill, whatever it may be, this is what gives them the, the advantage. 
Now, as we know, for Coke, there's Pepsi. For BMW, there's Mercedes. For KFC, there's a Popeye. There's always something out there as an alternative. As a competitor, how do I beat my competition to take the top place? The ideal way, let me make a better product. But what's the easiest way? Let me make something very similar, market it cheaper, and get the, uh, and, you know, target the market like that. So the word is in Coke that there's only two executives that know the recipe for Coke. And what they do with this is that these guys aren't even allowed to fly in the same plane. Now, if I wanted to reverse engineer Coke, here's another easier way. Let's look at the industrial process. It's, it's not a bunch of guys, you know, stirring a pot. It's a bunch of massive tanks, or, you know, PLCs are saying, okay, take, you know, X amount of tank one, tank B, tank C, mix it up, do this. That's the easiest way to go and reverse engineer it. So we were looking at a case in uh, uh, South Korea. South Korea is industrial espionage hub. I mean, you think China's bad? It's nasty out there. Bunch of industrialists, crazy amount of, uh, you know, goods. So what we found was a, one of the um, PLCs was, to, was uh, one of the PLCs, uh, machine connected to PLC had a malware that, that was actually connected to the internet. And we're figuring, what the, why the hell would you connect to the internet? And, you know, we're joking around, yeah, maybe the uh, operators wanted to eat their kimchi across the street and look at bad, you know, the operations off their phones. But what was interesting is that it's actually having, uh, if you look at, there's a bunch of Modbus registrars uh, strings in there and HTTP. So you can look at, it's talking to the PLC through Modbus and actually taking the register data to figure out what the inner workings of the tanks are and exfilling that back out. Now, 24 of the top 30 companies in the world are ICS, rely on ICS. ICS. ICS reliability affects all of us. I mean, we've seen how even from Moscow to DC, how serious we're taking this as a threat. And one of the things you have to consider, I mean, for any sales and marketing guys, the biggest cyber spender outside of America is four countries, Saudi, Kuwait, UAE, and Qatar. And there's a reason why. Their entire economy is tied into the, to what comes out of the ground. And even, the, even their enemies know this. And this is why in that part of the world, this is the biggest place for cyber. I mean, I call this more war because it's not, this is where you're actually attacking tangible items, um, products. So this is the place where it's happening. And this is like the epicenter of it. And one of the things, you know, was interesting for uh, yesterday's discussion, the whole theme about air gap network. The first example I gave, that was a completely air gapped environment. And they know this. One of the reasons why you need that exfil data to look at the inner workings is you can use that data to target the uh, other, other side. Again, uh, I want to thank you guys. Um, again, shout out to Kaspersky for putting this awesome conference together and having industrial track. That is, you know, off the hook. And if you guys want to hit me, Twitter. Um, I don't drink. <laughs> so don't, don't worry. I, I have a pinch hitter for you. Singer, get up here. Get up here. All right, you're, you're pinch hitting on this one. All right, thank you very much. It was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Oh,